Hey, what is going on guys? I represent Stealth here and in today's video, we're going to be going over five key concepts that 99% of the player base failed to grasp. The top 1% of League players are going to be ranked at around mid-diamond and above, sometimes even a little bit higher than that, so these are going to be concepts in this video that you just don't see most League players start to actively implement into their games until you reach at least that elo. So if you are somebody who's just stuck on figuring out what you need to do to improve or you just don't know where you can go next on improving, then this video should be really good for you. If you're able to implement these concepts in this video into your game, it's going to drastically improve your play. So the first thing we're going to go over here is how to track the enemy jungler properly and I feel like this is a concept you don't even see people really start to use actively until you reach even high diamond like low diamond players a lot of the time are not even going to are not even going to actively track the enemy jungler like they might know how to track the enemy jungler a little bit but doing it to its fullest potential they probably have not reached that stage yet. So the first piece of valuable information you need to know is how much CS equates to how many camps the enemy jungler has taken. 4 CS, no matter what camp you take, is going to count as one camp. So if the enemy jungler takes blue buff, that's going to count as 4 CS. Same thing as he takes wolves, even though there's 3 wolves, it's still going to count as 4 CS. So just by looking at how much CS the enemy jungler has taken, you can have a really good idea or you can get a really good idea as to where he's going to be pathing next. So for example here, if the enemy jungler shows on the map and he's got 12 CS and he's only got one buff, then you know he's cleared only one side of his map. So if you just take that information in there, then you know he's probably going to be pathing to the opposite side of the map next to clear his like top side jungle. If he if he's taken bot side, say he goes for like a uh, level three gang bot, he does red, he does his raptors, he does krugs, ganks bot lane, shows bot there with only red buff, you know he's going to be pathing topside next because his whole topside is still going to be up. Now if the enemy jungler has 12 CS and they've got both their buffs, this is a little bit more difficult to track because for example you're in this background gameplay of this Elise here, she does a really unique path to where she's going to take her red, she's going to take her blue, do gromp, hits the level 3, then she's going to look for a gank mid, but then after that you don't really know exactly where she's going to go because she could either go back and do her wolves, she could go to raptors, or she could go back and do her krugs. What she ends up doing here is she just ends up going, going down bot lanes. So with 12 CS there, you just kind of have to, if, if they show on the map, you kind of just have to read like where they're going. You can't tell exactly as to which camp they're going to be looking to take next. Now, if the enemy jungler has like 20 or 24 CS, you can get a lot more information out of this because that means if they got 20 CS, they've taken every single camp except for one. So in this gameplay here, you got Olaf in the background there. He does a full clear except for doing Krug. So if Olaf shows top lane there with 20 CS, say he ganks top lane and you're playing bot lane you know that he's going to be looking to come bot lane a couple couple minutes later like 30 seconds to a minute later because his bot lane camps are going to be spawning next so if it's like three minutes 30 seconds into the game there four minutes into the game you should be expecting olaf as a bot lane at around like four to four and a half minutes Tracking CS is going to be especially important if you're a jungle main yourself because if you can track what camps the enemy has taken, it's going to allow for your counter jungling to be a lot more calculated. For example, if you see the enemy jungler topside ganking top, he's got 12 CS and both buffs. That means, means he's only taken 3 camps and that means that his raptors and his krugs are likely still up. So if you're jungling, you're doing a topside to bot side clear and you see that, what you can do in that situation is you need know his raptors are up, you know his krugs are up, so you have the option there of going into his jungle and taking away those camps. Now tracking the enemy jungler CS is not the only way that you can kind of get an idea of where he's going to be pathing on the map. You can take a look at which of your lanes, which of top lane or bot lane arrives to lane first and whichever lane arrives first, the enemy jungler is likely started on the opposite side of the map. So for example, if you see your top laner or if you see the enemy top laner get to lane before the enemy bot lane, then the jungler is likely started bot side and he's going to be pathing towards top side. 
Now, if you do know that the enemy jungler starts bot side, he's going to be top side at the very earliest, 2 minutes 30 to 2 minutes 45 seconds into the game. That's about as quick as you can clear three buffs doing your red, your blue, and your gromp, and then looking to gank either top or mid. So if you think the enemy jungler, or if the enemy jungler is playing like a good level three ganking jungler, say they're playing something like the Elise or the Lee Sin, who's gonna look to gank very early on in the game, you do gotta realize that that's gonna be the timing as to when they can look to gank you. So for number two, this one has to do with timing the enemy summoner spells and just really looking to play off those openings. You don't even see players do this once you do reach like masters and above. Like you'll see probably once every couple games, some players will do it and you'll usually see support players more so uh, timing summoner spells. But I just think it's something that's very easy to do and more players should be looking to do this in their game. So all you got to do is make sure you do have timestamps enabled. If you don't have timestamps enabled, then go into your settings and do that. When you do burn the enemy's flash in the early game, just ping their flash and then on the timestamp on the side there, just add five minutes to that. So if the enemy flashes at two minutes, 53 seconds of the game, plus five, that's going to be 753. So you know the enemy's flash is going to be up at that timing. So the best way for you to look to do this is when you do burn the enemy's flash, just make sure you ping it in the chat there. And then once you do have some downtime, look to type it out for your team in chat. So you can just say like, if you're playing up against a Zoe, for example, Zoe F, whatever the time is in the chat, or if you're playing top lane up against a Fiora, Fiora F, whatever the time is in the chat there, you don't have to type out anything more than that. Like don't type out like a whole paragraph or anything. Just usually what players do is they put the champion's name, then they put F and then the timer of the flash. So just being able to time the enemy summoner spells in the early game allows you to make a lot more calculated plays. If you time the enemy's flash, then you can have that window to set up a gank for your jungler. You can tell your jungler to come gank your lane because their flash is not up yet. You can also make a lot more aggressive calculated plays. For example, I like to do this a ton when I'm playing Velkaz. I always try to track the enemy's flash because if they're playing in a mobile champion and they don't have flash, I know that I, if I hit a full combo on them, I'm just going to be able to burn them out right away with that so if they don't have the flash there i'll play a lot more aggressive in those situations because if i hit that one spell and get a full combo off they're just gonna die right away now for number three here, a lot of players do not play off and take information from where their jungler is on the map. For example, your jungler is basically like a ward for you. If your jungler is in the top side river, if he goes for an invade on the enemy jungler's top side, you can just use process of elimination and almost guarantee yourself that the enemy jungler is going to be on the bot side of the map. You don't even need to know where the enemy jungler is. You don't need to have spotted him once and by where your jungler is on the map, you can have a really good idea as to where the enemy jungler is. So by using that information, you can either play more aggressive in lane or you can play less aggressive. If you're playing bot lane and you see your jungler invading the enemy's top side, you just have to play back a little bit. You got to know that the enemy jungler is likely either going to be looking to gank mid or gank bot lane. And you can't start flaming your jungler because he's like invading the top side of the map and he's not helping you if you get ganked. If you get ganked in that situation, that's 100% your fault because you should know that the enemy jungler is on the bot side of the map. Now in that situation there, if you're the top laner and your jungler is looking to invade top side and you spot out the enemy jungler also on the top side, then as like the top laner there and as the mid laner, you should be looking to like try to shove your lane in and help your jungler out. You should even be doing that before your jungler looks to go for the invade. So if you notice your jungler pathing in the river there and he's looking to ping towards the enemy jungler's top side, as the top laner and the mid laner, you just want to be trying to shove your waves in and you want to be able to try to run first before your laner. Now if you notice that throughout the game your jungler is camping bot lane and he ends up getting bot lane really far ahead then the only opening really for the enemy jungler to look to gank is either mid lane or top lane so if your team is doing really well on one side of the map it's really it's really important for you to realize that that's going to be your win condition so you got to play a little bit safer in lane you got to realize that you're probably going to be the focus for the enemy jungler cuz he's not really going to want to look to go bot there if he's not going to win the 3v3 if he goes bot he might even lose like a 3v2 if he ends up ganking and the bot lane is super fed so you can just kind of change how you play in lane depending on what your jungler has done on the map prior. 
And then on the odd occasion, you'll get that jungler that will just come to your lane and he'll actually end up giving the enemy laner a couple kills. So he'll end up just getting the enemy laner a little bit ahead. And in that situation, if that ends up happening, what you got to do is just spam a couple missing pings on him. And then you also got to start flaming him a little bit in chat. All right, but in all seriousness though, just look to play off of your jungler a little bit more. This is something that I've been trying to implement in my games myself a lot more recently. I feel like it's drastically improved my play because I'm just making a lot more calculated plays now based on what my jungler is looking to do. If we take a look at number four now, 99% of players just rely way too much on their team for information or for shot calls, or they just trust their teams way too much. You gotta think of your teammates like monkeys in a way. Yes, they're gonna be able to process basic information and do basic plays, but you can't really expect the advanced plays out of your teammates. So for an example, one that will happen very often almost every game in solo queue is you'll end up getting roamed on by the enemy support or by the enemy top laner and you'll end up dying and you'll blame your team for not missing pinging or not pinging it out for you, but you just can't rely on your team to do that. Before you look to play up in lane, before you look to make an aggressive play, look at your bot lane, look at your top lane, or just look at the map. It doesn't matter what lane you're playing. Look at the map, just take a glance before you look to make that aggressive play so that you don't end up just getting roamed on when you look to play aggressive and you end up dying and throwing your lead. You also got to be the one to take charge. You got to be the one to make objective calls. Tell your team what to do. In so many of my recent games, like I've known what the right call is. I've known what the play should be on the map, but instead I've decided to listen to what my team does and it's just ended up backfiring in so many different situations. You got to be the one to take charge. If you know what the correct play is on the map, if you know that you should be like backing off to prepare for dragon, or you know that you should be going for baron instead of taking it tower make that call for yourself and then learn from those plays if it ends up being a bad call don't dwell on it just learn from that understand that making calls and being the shot caller on your team is going to help you improve a ton in the long term and then for number five here to round out the video, you should be changing how you position in lane based on the situation and based on the game. We're gonna go over an example here for every single role. We're gonna start off down in the bot lane and we got Biofrost playing Thresh support here as a really good example to this. So Biofrost on the Thresh there, as he gets to lane, he's just going to sit in the bot lane brush and getting control of this bot lane brush is just so important in the early game as a support, especially if you are playing like a really aggressive support who does have some good all-in potential at level two. So what being in the brush here is going to force the enemy team to do is it's going to force them to play a little bit more passive in lane. You're going to notice the Kai'Sa and the Yumi there very hesitant to walk up in lane. If they do end up walking up further and they go for CS, then Thresh is just going to be in the bush there. They're not going to see the hook come out of the bush. So the likelihood of you hitting skill shots if you're sitting in the brush there is much more likely. So it's just really important to do. And what's going to happen here in this game is that the MF and the Thresh, they're going to hit level two before the opponent. And because Biofrost was able to get control of that brush, he's just going to look to all in the opponent and they're just going to be really surprised by it. He ends up getting the all in on the Yumi, killing the Yumi there. And this lane, just because of how Biofrost frost positioned early on is basically over now. Now what you can also do as a top laner or a bot laner is you can look to position towards the bush when you are looking to trade in the laning phase. If you don't know, you can walk into an unwarded bush and it's going to drop minion aggro. So if you end up like trading aggressively in a minion wave and you're taking a lot of minion damage, you can just dip into the bush and the minion aggro will detract from you. So this is especially important like if you're playing a top laner, say you're playing like a range top laner like Cassiopeia. We'll see a pretty good example here of this in the background gameplay. The Cassiopeia player ends up like trading with the Gnar, dips into the bush to get the fog of war so that Gnar can't end up landing an auto on him or something unless he does end up putting a ward in the bush and it allows him to just get rid of the minion aggro from him. So when you are looking to play aggressive in lane, just really be looking to play around those bushes to give yourself the fog of war advantage and to also drop the minion aggro. 
And then if we take a look at an example, if you're playing mid lane, we'll have a good example in the background gameplay here as well as Jensen playing Cassiopeia. You're going to notice that his Lee Sin is going to come on the map. He, he comes from base and then he heads towards the top side of the map. And as he does that, Jensen is going to start positioning more so towards top side than to the bot side of the lane. You really want to be positioning towards your strong side when you're playing mid lane. So whichever lane you have warded more or whichever side of lane your jungler is on, that's the side of lane you want to be hovering more so over towards playing mid. This is just going to allow you to be a lot more safe in lane. It's going to allow for you to not die to ganks if your jungler is ganking from the other side of the map. And if you do end up getting ganked from the side that's warded or from the side that your jungler is on, it's going to be much more likely that you can see that and that you can just avoid the gank really easily. This is just really important, especially for the early laning phase when your jungler is taking like scuttle crab or something, or when he's in the river, because if you just position to that side of the lane, there's really no chance you can die to a gank, because if you just end up walking down the river towards your jungler and he comes to help you, if the enemy team looks to face check into that bush, then it's likely you're going to be able to just win the 2v2. So you're positioning early on in the laning phase as a mid laner, and just throughout the laning phase, it's really important for you to just not die and for you to also gain those advantages. Now if your jungler is looking to gank your lane, if that's going to be the play, you do kind of want to position to the opposite side of where your jungler is because what you want to do is you want to try to force the enemy laner towards your jungler. So if you're playing mid and your jungler is ganking from the top side of the map, you kind of want to hover towards bot side a little bit and push them towards positioning on that top side towards where your jungler is. So most of the time you do want to position on the side of the map to where your jungler is, but if he is looking to gank you, you want to try to force the enemy later towards your jungler. All right, so that is going to be all for the video, guys. Hopefully you did find this helpful. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.